most contracts that we that we studied have specific uh, goals of the program, what they're meant to achieve, who they're meant to serve, how long the program runs, and what's expected in terms of the uh, the provider. In our analysis of the regulatory environment and the legal frameworks, we argue that based on the evidence, there are certain functions of the program that are required for success. We categorize them as four. Uh, one is competition, so having the, the right of entry, having the right of um, establishment and uh, freedom to, to operate is one indicator. The second one is accountability, so at the same time that there is um, uh, ease of entry, there's also expectation that they are performing what the public requires, and there's a mechanism for holding them accountable, reporting results, for example, specifying um, uh, goals and measurable outcomes in the contract. Third is autonomy, so giving the institutions the right to organize the, uh, the school, to set the standards, to decide how to teach, even if there are national standards, how they're going to achieve those standards the right to uh, organize the, um, the school organization, curriculum, and um, labor uh, uh, functions. The fourth area is information, which for us included public information, but also information to parents so they can make better choices, so they know how the school where their children, at, that their children attend, how it's performing, how it's performing over time, how it's performing compared to other countries. And we argue that uh, to promote access, these schools should, if they're receiving public funds, should not be selective, so they can't exclude students that are difficult to teach, and they should be uh, affordable to students. So either there's no charge or there are subsidies to parents to attend these schools. So the success of the program would be measured also by how accessible they were and how they promote equity.